Welcome to the Fort Mill Town Council regular meeting for November the 8th, 2021. If you have a cellular phone, a mobile phone, please silence your phone so that we can give you our undivided attention and you ours. So, um, thank you for joining us this evening. We will stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. And Ronnie, would you do our invocation? Thank you. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Let us pray. Father, we come before you tonight again thanking you for all the blessings that you've bestowed upon us. We pray that you'll be with us tonight. Give us the wisdom to conduct the Downs business. And we give you praise and honor for it. In your name we pray. Amen. 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 Thank you. Grab my leg. Oh, God, I hate when that happens. You okay? <coughs> no. <laughs> Need to walk around. Your honest. face is red. I'm good. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, council, you have received the minutes of the October 11th town council meeting. Are there any changes, deletions, or additions? Hearing none, I move to approve. <coughs> Got a motion to approve. Second. second. I have a second. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 All those opposed, nay. Thank you so much. Public comment. Pursuant to section 2-46 of the Code of Ordinances for the Town of Fort Mill, any citizen of the town may appear before council for the purpose of providing public comments on any municipal matter except personnel matters. Those who wish to speak must sign in outside of council chambers prior to the start of the meeting. Citizens are given three minutes each to speak. Do we have anyone signed in this evening? No, Mayor, we do not. All right, we will close the public comment portion of our agenda presentations um, we're going to have a presentation Chicana, would you like to wait until after the executive session to do that since we're going to vote on that later in the agenda or do you prefer to go ahead and make it happen okay we'll come on and make it happen then <laughs> Just remember, I gave you a choice. <laughs> I'm kidding. Huh? Okay. Well, I just want to make it good for her. Okay. Oh, either way is good with me, though. Okay. Okay. Well, we are excited to present our slate of events for our Christmas in Fort Mill. Um, and we'll begin with our Fort Mill Christmas Village. It will be on Thursday, December the 2nd from 5 to 8.30 p.m. in downtown Fort Mill. Um, from 5 to 8.30 p.m., you'll be able to enjoy food, holiday drinks, shopping with our vendors and downtown merchants, a trackless train, and kids' activities. And then at 5.30 p.m., we'll have our lighted children's parade on Main Street. This is the first time we've done that. And our tree lighting ceremony will follow that from the bandstand. And then at 6 p.m., you'll be able to enjoy entertainment on our stage on South White Street, featuring local schools, churches, dance groups, and individuals. And then also during that time, you'll be able to visit with Santa, our South Carolina Strawberry Queens, and Barry in the bandstand. And next, you'll see a map of the layout of the event for the evening. We'll have our Christmas Vendor Village set up in Veterans Park um, parking lot and the green space will be open for parking for the public. And then we'll have our trackless train and a few food trucks located on North White. And then on South White, we'll have our entertainment stage. And on Main Street is where we'll have our lighted children's parade. It will start at the top of Main near the Fort Mill Animal Hospital, and it will travel down to the bottom of Main near the bandstand where we'll um, flip the switch. The mayor and a few special guests will flip our switch to light our lovely town tree and our beautiful town decorations. And then we'll also have um, some more kids activities on Main Street. Um, and we have a few road closures for that. Um, South White will be closed from noon to 10 to get the stage in. And then um, North White, Maine, Confederate, and Academy will be closed from 3 to 10. And our Christmas Vendor Village, um, we're going to be accepting applications for that through Wednesday, November the 17th. We have a few spaces left. 
For our lighted children's Christmas parade, we're also accepting applications for that. Um, and this is for families with children 10 years old and younger. And um, they're asked to dress up in Christmas attire with lights and decorations on their tricycles, bicycles, strollers, small wagons, that type of thing. And the parade will be staged again at the top of Maine and will travel to the bottom of Maine near the bandstand. And our South Carolina Strawberry Queens will pick their most decorated family entries to win prizes for that. Um, and those um, applications are available on our town website. And then our Christmas Village is going to um, feature food and drinks that will be provided by our downtown merchants at all of our wonderful restaurants. Um, there's going to be also a limited number of food trucks and we we'll, would like to have a small um, beer and wine um, trailer in the Christmas Village, in the Vendor Village. And then, so we are seeking a resolution for public alcohol sales, possession and consumption for that and also for amplified sound for that event. And then next up, we have our 74th annual Fort Mill Christmas Parade on Saturday, December the 4th at 11. And we're accepting applications for it through November the 17th at 5 p.m. And we have our Fort Grand Marshals for this year's parade is our 2021 Dixie Youth Baseball Division 1AA World Series champions and their head coach, Ryan Smith. Um, and these wonderful young men um, are very excited to be our Grand Marshals. Um, and they feel very honored to have that bestowed upon them. So they thank y'all for that. And they are going to be riding in a trolley in our parade. And then also our last year's Grand Marshal, Steve Kasky, Wormy from the Fort Mill Barbershop. We've invited him to ride in the parade this year since we didn't get to have our in-person event last year. Our parade route will begin at Tom Hall in Unity and travel through Main Street and historic downtown Fort Mill and North White Street and then exit at Water Elijah Park. And again, we're accepting applications through November the 17th at 5 o'clock for that. And our parade always features um, our wonderful local schools, businesses, queens, scouts, organizations, churches, and of course Santa and lots more of fun stuff. And next up, you'll see our parade map, map for parade map route for that. Um, and our primary street closures for that event is Tom Hall, Maine, and North White. And then we have a few secondary street closures: um, Grace, Forest, Monroe, White, Confederate Springs, Claiborne, and Massey, um, from 10:45 to 1. Our next event is going to be our Santa Trolley Around Town on Saturday, <coughs> December the 11th. It will begin at 9 a.m. and you'll be able to check out our route at our town website. And also we have an app um, that we'll be promoting on our social media um, so the public can follow us throughout the day to see where we're at. But our route will also be posted with a general guideline of times where we'll be at what time. And you've seen beautiful Miss Trudy. Got to ride it last year as well as Miss <laughs> Cook. <laughs> and uh, it was just a fun day. And we really enjoyed going around town, seeing all of our um, community out waiting for Santa to come through. And then our last event is going to be the Fort Mill Christmas Cookie Crawl on Saturday, December the 18th from 10 to 2. And um, we let individuals and families receive, uh, register to receive a cookie tin, and they'll travel around mm -hmm. to 10 local participating businesses to receive one cookie at each location. And registration for that will begin on November the 29th. And we have 100 participants um, that we'll be accepting for that this year. So that event has grown. We had 50 wonderful families last year that loved every minute. And they were just so um, excited to do it. So we're, we were happy to be able to open that up to more people this year. And um, we just want to say Merry Christmas from the town of Fort Mill. And we just look forward to all of these wonderful events. Jacana, thank you for the presentation and for all the work to pull this together. Uh, Jacana works extremely hard to make sure that our events are changing, evolving as our town is, and 
ensures that there's something for everybody. So I'm extremely grateful for that. A couple of questions. Uh, all that you've provided will be on our social media, right? Right. And our website. So if you were reading this this evening and you need a refresher, please find that at our um, Facebook page, our website, so that you can see where those events, events and times will be held. And we have inclement weather procedures that we would follow, and I'm certain we would also post those right. on our, if it right. were to rain out the parade. You know, it hasn't happened too many years that I've been in it, but uh, it can. I'd like it to snow <laughs> out. <laughs> but, uh, Santa no, says he's already put in. It's going to be very beautiful. <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah, we've been yeah. in the downpours. Um, the other thing is I, I do think that as we have opened the amphitheater that everyone um, would like to see us start expanding in that direction uh, for space and other reasons. And after this year, uh, we certainly will be. We already had um, reservations and projects in place uh, ready to roll because we didn't get to do this last year. It's a special time for our community. Um, you know, I, I think uh, some of the changes are going to be um, a lot of work, <laughs> a whole lot of work. But um, thank you for the effort that you're making. Um, Council? Again, there's a lot. You, It's one of those where every year I wonder how you're going to get any better than the year before because um, it, you've really put your stamp on this and doing event planning is definitely your wheelhouse. I have some concerns honestly and I know it's probably too late to change a lot of these things but it seems like every year when we're doing the stuff at the bottom of Main Street there's never enough time for the parents to swap out to get front row seats for their kids and adding a parade to it and then we're going here and trying to navigate all the parents within a one hour one and a half hour period have some concerns so i'm sure we'll come up with some logistics or ways for people to be able to be front and center for when their kids are presenting or um, singing for us other thing davy you and i've talked i think everything we've done making sure that the speakers are loud enough with the anticipated crowds that we have because um, every year the crowds grow and so our speakers should grow with the size of the crowds um, to make sure they can hear everything wherever they happen to be um, and then one other comment that I had on the Santa trolley, have we added more time? Because I know we stayed behind schedule the entire time last year because so many kids were coming out and we couldn't go the speed limit. You were literally going five miles an hour during the whole route. Yeah, so, we're actually condensing it a little bit, trying to okay. hit just more of the main areas um, in main each arteries. location. Perfect. and just. <clears throat> working on that a little bit. So. I think that'll be a great way to do it. People yeah. would come to him. They didn't expect him to drive by his front door. They were willing to go find Santa right. um, once or twice <clears throat> even. So right. um, I think that's a great way to try to make sure we stay on track because they certainly were hoping to track them along the way for, too. Yeah. So, okay, I'm glad. I appreciate you addressing that. Trudy? Jacana, I really enjoyed um, being on the trolley with Santa last year. And if you don't have a volunteer, I volunteer again. Sure. <laughs> well, we would love to have you. We need Mrs. Claus. You're going to be Miss Claus. Yes. <laughs> we have a standing date every year. Any further questions or comments for Jacana? Hearing none, Jacana, thank you so much. Thank we you. We really appreciate you. Next on our agenda, we have an executive session. Please note, council may take actions on executive session items listed on the agenda when we come back into public session. Our executive session uh, this evening is a discussion on personnel contractual matters regarding the town attorney. Um, I will need a motion to go into executive session. I make a motion we move into executive session. Second. All right, I have a motion and a second. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 All those opposed, nay. We will return shortly. Thank you so much. All right, let the record reflect that no vote was taken, no decision was made in our executive session. I would like to have a motion to return to regular session. Make a motion to return to regular second. session. I have a motion and a second. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 All those opposed? Thank you so much. We will now move into old business, item number one. 
an ordinance amending the zoning map of the town of Fort Mill so as to change the zoning designation for York County tax map number 02004040004 from R15 residential to LC local commercial. The location is 314 White Street. Penelope, would you like to talk to us about that? Good evening, Mayor and Council Members. Um, this is second reading for the rezoning of 314 North White Street. I'm here to answer any questions that you may have. Has anything changed, Penelope? No, ma'am. our first reading. No, ma'am. Council, do you have any questions for Penelope? Because of the audience here today, um, do you mind explaining what that difference is? Because we have a few um, young students. students. Yeah, we do. Um, so sure. that way they understand that. I'd be more than happy to explain. This property was an old gas station wrecker service um, for many years in, in the town of Fort Mill on located at 314 North White Street. And so the zoning was um, basically residential, even though it's been for years a commercial property. So it was a non-conforming use. Um, we have a new developer now that would like to revitalize the building um, to keep the unique architectural standard and to be able to have a chicken sandwich shop. Mm -hmm. um, and I believe it's okay, Jason, like um, Bossy Beulah's <laughs> is, is something that um, they're looking into um, coming to the town of Fort Mill. And so they needed to rezone the property and they asked for, for the rezoning application. They went through the process. You go through the planning commission for recommendation and then you go to the town council for two readings. Um, the first reading, we had it, we held a public hearing, had any opportunity for people to speak. And tonight, um, it's second reading, no changes. A traffic impact analysis has been done as well. And we're so excited to be able to have another business close to downtown, near the park, um, and still keep the local history of the town of Fort Mill with the existing building. And for those, uh, thank you for asking for that. For those that are familiar with town, um, this is a good fit for that location. It, it's a good fit. And those of us that grew up having businesses all along that area, uh, we're excited to see that occur again. And it's close to my house. <laughs> <laughs> Frequent flyer over here. Yeah. Um, and we all need more chicken restaurants. Yes, so we do. Yes. yes, we do. Well, Penelope, thank you for covering that um, sure. so succinctly. Uh, any further questions? Hearing none, I'd like to have a motion for this particular. I make a motion to accept old business item number one. Thank you. We have, second. It. we have a motion to approve and a couple of seconds. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 All those opposed, nay. Thank you so much. Thank you. Uh, new business item number one, first reading, an ordinance to adopt a revised business license ordinance in, according, in accordance with the Business License Standardization Act 2020, Act number 176. Chris Pettit is our expert. Chris, would you like to talk to us, please? Yes, Mayor. Um, South Carolina General Assembly adopted Act 176, um, which goes into effect January 1st, 2022. Uh, the, uh, the act requires all municipalities and counties that impose a business license tax to revise their ordinances in order to align with the act's standard requirements that are standard across the state. The uh, Municipal Association of South Carolina subsequently took the act and developed the model ordinances for municipal municipalities to adopt um, that conform to those standard requirements. So. Um, what's presented to you this, uh, this evening for first reading is that model ordinance adapted to the town of Fort Mill. Um, there's the, the, the main difference, I think, from our current business license program is the due date when business license fees are due. Uh, as of today, our current program business license fees would be due at the end of February. After the adoption of this uh, standard ordinance, the model ordinance, um, business license fees would be due uh, at the end of April. So instead of the end of February, fees are now due statewide at the end of April. Um, there are numerous other small changes. Most of those are uh, sort of staff or administrative side changes, but that is the biggest public facing um, change that will be made. Um, otherwise, just happy to answer any questions that you may have on this, this change um, in the business license.
Any questions for Chris? So how are we planning on communicating this to people who currently have a business license in the town to give them a heads sure. up? Of the so uh, towards the end of every year, we send out renewal notices to any existing business. And with that renewal notice, we can have information in there uh, about the change. Mm -hmm. the, the, the existing businesses, aside from having a few couple more months to, to pay their license, they really shouldn't notice a change, uh, particularly uh, this year given the fees so one of the requirements of the act is that with some of the changes you're making you can't receive a windfall and extra revenue from a business so our fees are pretty much staying the same uh, they are staying the same that they were so they won't really notice any huge jump in fees they won't notice anything except they really have two more months to pay but that'll all be communicated to them uh, at the end of the year when we send out renewal notices. And how will that lag of two months affect our budget cycle? <laughs> Same thing. <laughs> it, so a lot of people are, so currently the fees are due in February. A lot of people think starting January, oh, I got to pay my business license. So we receive revenue fe January, February and into March uh, sometimes. So uh, the anticipation is we'll still receive some revenue January, February, March. Uh, certainly they'll, they'll need to pay by April if they don't. Uh, they'll continue on. It, it isn't going to uh, measurably make any difference to us. Uh, the budget will be fine uh, with with we're, we're some of that lag in revenue. Unlike some of the other communities around here, rely heavily on their business tax to even make budget. We're, we're not in that same boat. Most of our money in business licensing comes from uh, monies that are actually collected by the municipal association and given to us in big checks. Um, <clears throat> You know, our total we collect about four million dollars in business licensing, but most of that comes from municipal association, and that really wouldn't be impacted by this. So, it should be negligible. Um, you know, but that change. I think it's important for those that will view this on the recycle that business licenses are important. Um, several years ago, 2011, we had a pretty ugly hailstorm here in Fort Mill. Um, a lot of roofs were torn up, and there right afterwards there weren't enough local companies to address all the roofs that had holes and we had a lot of contractors come into town that were providing roofs that weren't following the guidelines set by the state for the safety and the longevity of the products they were using people in town don't know the difference unless you're you know going out and looking up those codes and those ordinances you might be paying the same price for a roof that's only going to last you a year or two than the guy next door that bought one with a lifetime warranty. That's a, just one example. The others are, are really important from the standpoint of structural safety and ensuring <coughs> that our community is provided the best service uh, from businesses that aren't going to walk away with their money. So um, business licensure is important and it's important when you're looking for someone to do business for you that you ask them, do you have a license with the town? Is there a way to back up on what the mayor just said for me as a homeowner doing work to verify that somebody has a license if we're starting to look even before you actually talk to them? If I want to, to hire someone. Is you, there you, on our site? You have to provide, mm -hmm. your, if you don't have an established building to hold your license on the wall, then you have to have it on your person or in your vehicle that you are operating out of to, if someone asks them, you show it to them. Yeah, I'm just thinking before you ever open up the door to that person to have that conversation. When As you're of just right now, you, you would have to call our staff and, and, and they could tell you. We ask. have yeah. 1,400 plus businesses that have a license, so a list is very comprehensive, but uh, as of right now, you and can call the town and constantly moving as well, mm -hmm. especially after the pandemic. Uh, yeah, and unfortunately, uh, could we publish the list? Sure, but a, a lot of times it's difficult because it'll be Chris Pettit doing business as Chris's roofing, or you know, there's a lot of weird naming. So you may see something on the list and not actually know it's the actual business you're talking to. But feel free to call us and, and we can answer all those questions. Thank you. Okay. If there are no further questions, I would like to entertain a motion on new business item number one. 
I make a motion to accept new business item number one. Second. We have a motion to accept and a second. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 All those opposed, nay. Thank you. New business item number two, a resolution accepting the streets within the Mason's Bend Phase 1 subdivision into the Town of Fort Mill Street Maintenance System. Penelope is our expert. Penelope, what can you tell us? Yes, ma'am. We have a number of resolutions tonight. So the first one is for phase one of Mason's Bend. Um, the developer, the applicant of this request is uh, Crescent uh, Mason's Bend. Uh, Mr. James Martin is here tonight. Phase one is the Mason's, a portion of Mason, Mason's Bend Drive, Bucks Quarry Court, and a portion of a Bee Balm Trail. Um, they basically was submitted to us and all the roads are recorded prior to the establishment of a street acceptance policy. Therefore, they're exempt from the inspection fee and surety bond. We've reviewed the application. It's complete and accurate. Um, the, the phase one subdivision is 100% built out, which meets all the standards for the street acceptance policy. The maintenance agreements for landscape medians and other non-standard right-of-way sections have been completed and recorded. And also the Public Works and Utilities Department have reviewed the roads submitted for this acceptance and found them to be in compliance. Should Town Council vote to approve this resolution except in the streets, the developer would enter into a one-year warranty period during which time they are responsible for any maintenance to the streets. Upon the closing of the warranty period, the town would take over the maintenance responsibility for the street. So tonight in front of, it's your decision to approve um, the re resolution of accepting the Mason's Bend phase one. Okay. And council members, you heard and can see on your agenda that this is the same description uh, for each of the business items, uh, two, three, four, and five they're just different phases and different areas within this subdivision is yes, that correct that is correct mayor good good any questions for penelope so given that we're taking ownership of roads that are at the front of this neighborhood and I understand the build out being fairly complete but where are we on the rear of it because we know the construction traffic is still going to be adding to the wear and tear with all the trucks we're very close with um, phase four and six i believe um, i'm not sure about five a and b if you if, if, if yeah, yeah, james yeah, martin's here that's, yeah. what, that's yeah. why i'm sorry come on yeah, you yeah, can join us mr martin us. Yeah. it's a pleasure to be back in no, front it's of so you nice to see you. to see you a lot of familiar faces up here but Phase five, um, I don't know who's controlling the, um, but if you go up to the top, it all, the, the back entrance is fully paved okay. and all the construction traffic, all the homes now being built are in the, in the back. And so they're okay. coming in off of Sutton View Road, off of Sutton. Okay. Um, so we, that was what delayed us bringing forth phase, all the earlier phases. Uh, we couldn't walk those and get those ready to be submitted until the back entrance was in because there was so much construction traffic on those. Okay. So that's been open for about a year now, the back entrance. Gotcha. Yeah, 5A. All, all, all the roads are now fully paved, so there's two different access points in the community. I like that. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Before we vote, I would like to challenge council and staff to take a look at, uh, a, once again, review the impact fees. We currently do not charge anything in the transportation portion of impact fees, and the town doesn't have a renewable source of revenue for long-term maintenance of streets that we are taking on. I appreciate that the developers put them in the condition that they're acceptable to us but we really don't have a way of funding those because we're not like the state. We don't do transportation for a living. So I would like the challenge to be that we review the impact fees within the next 30 days and take a look at what options are available to us uh, to see that that funding is available when the road maintenance is required. I do not disagree. I would kind of like to piggyback on that, um, and it's part of what we'll have to do for the due diligence for impact fees, is making sure what our cost to serve for this is. There is a lot of roads here. You know, making sure our budget that we're setting aside the funds as we get these larger neighborhoods. We know Massey will be coming before too long if they ever fix all the road issues in there. Um, 
every day. Um, but yeah, as we start looking to this, this is a lot. That, I mean, if you end up with a patch of this or a section of roadway that um, is faulty and we're taking responsibility and we don't do roads for a living, how are we, we don't know the cost of it. So I challenge us as we review this for our impact fee discussion on transportation that we also know what our true cost of service for a given area of roadway maintenance. So, you know, a mile, two miles, whatever you want to And pick. this has nothing to do with Mason's no. Bend. No, no. <laughs> it's beautiful and, and you've done a super job. So thank you so I'm much. Going back for in phase six, right on the bar, yeah. just save it for me. It, it's I'm it's all good. I'm just adding this up as I'm flipping through the thing here. So it's right around a five mile stretch that with all the little roads and everything we're taking in there. And you figure it's about a million dollars a mile to repave a strip of road and repave a road. So that's that's a, a, over a $5 million hit that we'd have to the budget if something went sideways and we'd have to redo a section of that. Yep. And Ms. Cook, um, yeah. to answer your question, we also provide after the town council accepts <coughs> roads, we do an asset documentation that we give to um, Shantae Buller, the finance director, so she knows exactly the, hey, the, the length of the <laughs> roads and, and based, based on the cost estimate of that road that we have accepted. Okay. And how do we communicate with the HOA when there is one of this transition and what's taking place and what is changing for them once we take over the roads? Well, that's a good question. We haven't, um, you know, in my time being here two and a half years, you know, I'm not directly talking to the HOA, you know, I'm t directly talking to the developer and typically the developer informs the neighborhood, hey, you know, the town is now responsible for your roads. So we don't have uh, communication from the planning department. Now, I don't know if other um, departments have that communication with an HOA, but from the street acceptance um, policy application, the contact information is the developer. Um, oftentimes, we get citizens that just call the planning department or utilities department and ask, you know, is that a town road? Is it um, a county road? Or is it a state road? You or know, we get emails. Or we get emails. Or you asking. get emails. <laughs> yes, yes. Yeah. So, and, and that's kind of why I'm asking because not always is um, the developer as open and easy to work with as where we have today and with the HOA. So I think this, that if we have a statement from the town that's almost a template letter that says we've taken over the roads and here's what's going to be expected from staff from the town versus the developer whoever i think if we can draw that line in the sand real quickly then mm -hmm. it'll help prevent some of the emails and meetings we get pulled into sure. and another little tidbit if you go to york county gis they do you know once they it get all the paperwork it identifies it so for the mm -hmm. average citizen if they want to <coughs> use the york county gis they can see if it's a state road right. county road or a town road I think given the definition of as to what that means when we do take Absolutely. over a road also. That doesn't mean we're going to go in there and widen anything. We're not putting extra parking or anything like that. And we're, we're maintaining the existing road. Yeah. I think so. That'd be a great <coughs> question. And answer. Absolutely. Absolutely. We're getting okay. enough HOAs with now that we need to. All right. Any further okay. questions for Penelope? Hearing none. Barry, may I ask successively without a revisitation? I would do them individually. I will do them individually, yes. but I mean, can I, without revisiting the whole discussion? Oh, yes, yes, absolutely. Thank you. New business item number two, I would like a motion, please. I make a motion to accept new business item number two. Okay, I'll I second that motion. have a motion and a second. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Thank you. Those in, uh, opposed, nay, none. New business item number three, can I have a motion, please? I make a motion to accept new business item number three. Okay, do I have a second? Second. Okay, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 All those opposed, nay. Thank you. New business item number four. Can I have a motion, I make please? a motion to accept new business item number four. Okay, second. second. Thank you. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 All those opposed, nay. Thank you. And new business item number five. Can I have a motion, please? To round it all out, I accept new business <laughs> item number five. <laughs> Thank five. you. <laughs> all right. Now I have a second over here. Second. All right. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 All those opposed, nay. Thank you so much, Thank Penelope. Yep. And for <laughs> those of you being here to answer questions, Absolutely. it's greatly appreciated. Thank you. And if you never drove down in there, it's a beautiful development. It is. I haven't been on Sutton View. i got to go to the back mm -hmm. It's nice. I go by. Shantae, thank you for being here in case we had questions on that, too. 
New business item number six, a resolution designating the Maine, Nor um, Maine North White South White Veterans Parking Lot as the site of a public event on Thursday, December the 2nd, 2021 from 5 p.m. until 8.30 p.m. in which alcoholic beverages may be sold, possessed, and consumed and to authorize a special event permit for live music and sound amplifying equipment. Jacana? This is uh, the same from the presentation earlier. Is that correct? Does anyone have a question or a comment that they yes, need to can make? Can I make an amendment to it? Well, take out the alcohol sales. We can do that, Mayor uh, and Mr. Helms. I will tell you that um, the Main Street merchants were approved for four um, Main Street jams in 2021. Um, one being designated for November the 27th, which is Thanksgiving weekend. Staff found that out, uh, realized that recently, um, and, and quite honestly, with the events we've put on since the spring, coming out of COVID, trying to get these events put out, uh, we've held events from at Walter Wildlife Park, our downtown area. Um, we've added new events that we didn't have in the past, like uh, weekends on Main, um, second Saturday service. Um, we've extended our um, farmer's market dates to last uh, an, ex an extended period of right. time. And we've had to have staff for every one of those. And we have greatly utilized our staff to the point where we're having difficulty finding additional, you know, having them come in and work these additional events. We had the opportunity uh, to work with the Main Street merchants. Um, if they, you know, they, they asked if they could partner with us in this event in December, they would gladly cancel their event in November. Um, if you would like to uh, amend this certainly you have the right to do that and we'll go back and, and yeah, we're talking about them. selling alcohol at businesses on Main Street not they, having a stand set up somewhere else in the park they would be selling anyway on that date in during that event in their businesses it it would be difficult um, to um, oversee that and make sure that no one's leaving those businesses and work, working their way into the event anyway. It's I think what he's asking is different. I think he's asking, will they open as they normally do and follow their normal business protocol, or will there be additional locations in the Main Street area by which they're selling? Will there be beer truck? Will there be a tent? Will there be tables? It, it will be a, a trailer like we used in every other event. Uh, it would be placed in the, um, if you remember the uh, the presentation, the vendor um, village. village out in the parking lot at a veteran's lot. It will be in that away from the main street area and or the stage itself on White Street. I agree um, with Councilman Ronnie. Uh, I have zero problem um, with any of the events and they've handled them beautifully uh, up to this date. I have zero complaints. But I do think uh, the tree lighting event, the Christmas Village event, has always been focused on school children, church handbell choirs. I don't agree with combining the two, and it, I know this is not a surprise to you. Uh, I just don't. I, I think there have to be events that are solely for certain um, participants, and then there are events for others. Council, I'd like for you to weigh in on your thoughts as well um i don't disagree with what you guys are saying i would kind of piggyback on that with my comments earlier it's a short night to get a lot done it, you know you're talking about staff being overtaxed from all the events we're doing and honestly i don't see that council has ever said we had to do x number of events so i think if we need to pull back that's a decision that we need to make um but given that this is such a short night to try to get everything into I believe that becomes a distraction and a different purpose 
for the evening than what we're truly here to do, which is celebrate the children and the birth of Christ um, and the tree light. I, I just, I think it gives a mixed message. And I feel like we have done a phenomenal job supporting our businesses on Main Street and local merchants from the area. And we can certainly do some in other ways. You know, I just feel like this is not the appropriate time, that there's not enough time and it's not the right um, atmosphere for Christmas. So is the truck, the, the food truck or the beer truck would be over in the park, over in Veterans Park where the farmer's market is? Yes, where the food vendors would be, the food so trucks. It's just and one, all that. or it would be where multiple trucks. Train just is. one truck. <laughs> Man, where where the where Santa the train? train is. Well, the Santa train, yes, is on White Street. This is over in the veterans' lot. I mean, I don't have a problem with the, vet, the business on Main Street selling their no. alcohol. Well, they're licensed to do that. Right. And I just don't. It's I a mean, family event. Yeah. I just don't see a beer truck out in where the kids okay. and stuff's going to be. I will say some of the, um, with me traveling for work a lot, <coughs> there are some places that you buy a cup that you know you can take it outside within there. So to where in some of those instances, alcohol can be served and come outside the building. Maybe all it is for us in this situation is just a um, relaxing the standards with some type of an ordinance that for that evening they can bring them in and out of the business without serving with a separate truck. I'm not sure of how to make that work. I, I'm like you. The truck is kind of my no, bigger I'm, issue. I'm trying to but think. There's some. There's something I remember talking about this before. You know about actual customers walking outside the door, and it's a legal issue with their licensure, right. is it not? That that's really kind of difficult to accomplish to allow people to go because they're licensed to serve In on the premises. premises. Yeah. You know, like at dinner, and not to grab and carry. Gotcha. Mm -hmm. So I think the licensure part might be a little complicated um, if we didn't host the way it's been proposed. And again, you know, we wouldn't have a downtown if it weren't for the investment and the hard work of these merchants downtown. I'm not, not opposed right. to that. I'm just saying I think the coupling of the event with that is not a good feel for me. Well, so, but the, the people who are going to want to go get a beer are going to go get a beer. Yeah. You're not going to, I mean, uh, I think where if you picked a thousand people, there might be a hundred people. And it, I don't know, they're going to do like the hot cider, something like yeah, that. that's great. I mean, I don't, I don't see this turning into a big old we jam fest. Out and there. we haven't Man. had anything like that. The, they've no. been managed really well. I just don't see it as a good Yes. So as somewhat of a compromise, when I look at the way the resolution is worded, it says in which alcoholic beverages may be sold, possessed, and consumed. Um, is there a way that we can do that without having an additional beer truck out at Veterans Park next to the train to do that? So that it still allows that consumption on Main Street, but then it is purchased from the local businesses. And does that still cover within their area mm -hmm. of being able to walk outside the door with a drink? Um, further away from the actual stage and the activities yeah, but for the children right at gather. the parade <laughs> yeah, we do have I think if you're asking if you could amend the ordinance to take out the sale of alcoholic beverages but leave in the possession and consumption of alcoholic beverages is that what you're asking? Yes, I think that's probably I think that would be fine to, to do that in a resolution but I think that's not proper under their license because they agree. all have own premises licenses I agree Okay. We've been through that before. Okay. So I think it's either all or nothing. Okay. Yep. Thank you for the advice. I appreciate it. Thank you, Barry. <clears throat> Council? Um, I just want to clarify one thing. In the vendor village, um, the vendor village is going to be set up in the Veterans Park and the like, and the beer wine truck is going to be at the back of that. It's not on North Wide where the train and all that is. It's going to be up closer to Claver? <laughs> mm hmm. Right. It, you know where the veterans parking lot is? Mm -hmm. We're actually putting um, the vendors just kind of around that area. People are going to just walk around there and just using the green space for parking. And then you know, the beer and wine truck is just going to the back of that lot. Not kind of where the, the porta johns are. Right. Mm -hmm. Up closer to the old founders building. <clears throat> And we're making the assumption, but I'd, I'd like to clarify, the vendor that is providing or that you have um, pulled into this to be able to serve, it is one of our Main Street 
businesses. Businesses, correct. And, and the only reason we're really requesting this is um, because they make money off of the jams and we were wanted to allow them to do this to be able to recoup some of the money that they would be losing from not holding the jams. Mm -hmm. Okay, I'll remove my amendment. I don't have a motion at all. You had asked, could you do something yeah. with an amendment? I need a motion. I won't make one. You won't make one, yeah. all right. Anybody else care to make a motion? I make a motion to accept new business item number six. Second. Second. Okay, I have a motion to um, approve uh, business. Approve, I'm sorry. That's Did okay. I say accept? It's all right. I'm yeah, approve. It's okay. Um, business item number six, and I have a second. All those in favor, Wait please. Minute, I do have an additional question. Will we be cutting off alcoholic um, sales prior to 8.30? Yes, we will stop it at 8. We always try to stop at 30 minutes before and then leave. Yeah, I should have put that in there, I'm sorry. Okay, thank any, you. Any further questions, comments? We have a motion on the table to approve new business item number six as it is written. And we have a second. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 All those opposed? Nay. Okay. That ends our business items. Uh, we have one information, <coughs> dis well, yes, we have one information discussion item, capital projects update, Davey Broom. Thank you, Mayor. I uh, just want to give a, a brief update on where we stand uh, with our current capital projects. Uh, I'll begin with the project that we were winding down. We spent uh, over a year working on this project. It's the Walter Wild Elisha Park upgrades. Um, the final piece to this puzzle is the amphitheater. Uh, the photo you see here, we finally got our roof installed on the amphitheater. It is a metal roof. Um, the uh, the Shrubbery around the site has been completed as well. Um, part of the project included uh, some trees that were had to be removed during the uh, course of the project have been replaced by uh, a similar size, or, or excuse me, not similar size, but similar type of hardwood tree. So we've got additional trees on the site. Um, again, we are in the um, as far as the project has been completed 100 percent, um, we are currently uh, going through the final finalizations of having our have Kecking Wood go through and approve uh, the final payment to uh, Simon and Watson Construction, <coughs> who is work, who's done the work for us. Um, so we anticipate that being completed within the next week or two. Uh, we, I met with uh, Keckenwood today. We did the final walkthrough. There was a couple of just minor items that pertain to the landscaping and shrubbery that needed to be touched up before we sign off on the final, uh, final approval. Um, once that final um, pay app has been completed, I'll come back to you with a uh, final report on this project, letting you know where we stood um, within the timeline as well as on, on the budget. We were over budget on this um, project, but those numbers could change a little bit based on um, closing out all of the, the overall project and numbers themselves. So um, I will provide an update uh, as soon as those numbers are uh, presented to me. Um, the next project that we have going on is the Banks Athletic Park. Uh, it's currently under construction. Again, it consists of four baseball, uh, softball fields with a scoring tower, uh, a basketball court, playground, picnic shelter, and two restroom facilities, and quite a bit of parking. We have two parking uh, lots to the tune of 315 parking spaces. Um, again, the projected timeline um, is to be completed uh, mid-2022 at this time. Um, the overall project is $11 million project, uh, and just want to remind everyone that the land was secured through donation and at no cost. Uh, 
to the town. Quick question on that, David. Did we figure out a place for overflow parking? If needed, if we find out that's not enough parking spaces available during a tournament or large events? We have not determined an overflow parking area at this time. Okay. Um, we, we need to see what 315 spaces. That's a lot. How it, how it works. And we do not want to utilize the um, neighborhood if at all possible. Yeah, I'm just so seeing people we'll have on to, the road, so. Yeah, we have to plan this just right, uh, the events at this location, so that we don't uh, overcrowd our parking area. We don't want to, again, overflow into the neighborhood if at all possible. Okay. Uh, I provided some additional photos. You can see the construction site. Um, uh, most of the grading has been completed. They're still um, working to on the next photo, you can see that the standalone restroom is under construction, um, as well as the next photo, <coughs> some of the parking lots are already in uh, before being before asphalt being put down. So they're being uh, inspected uh, at this time, but they're being utilized by the construction crew. So they're not they have minimal vehicles on the main thoroughfare through. Waterside, they're utilizing these parking lots for their crew and staff. Uh, the next photo, um, we're getting a few questions from the neighbors. Uh, we want to put this on our website, uh, but I wanted to present it tonight. This is a mock-up panel, if you will, uh, providing uh, a snapshot of what the brickwork is going to look like, as well as the uh, type of siding and the color of the siding. Um, this panel will also include roofing material to give you an idea of what the roofs are going to look like. That was still under construction as we met last week, so it had not been installed yet. I uh, haven't been by there yet. We have a meeting out there to schedule for tomorrow. Um, they may have it up by then, but as we get more photos, I'll make sure that uh, I provide those to council. Uh, the next project um, we're, that we're working on is the tennis facility at the YMCA at the complex. Um, I spoke with ESP Associates, who is handling the design work for the six renovation of four courts, the addition of two new courts, as well as a restroom facility that in, uh, includes an office and a storage area for this um, for the tennis instructors. Um, I, I was told we should be seeing the final or at least the construction plans for staff review within the next couple of days or so. Um, once we receive those plans, staff would go through and make sure that they meet all of our specifications as well as all building codes. Um, to, and we'll provide feedback to the engineer and architect uh, from, you know, after that. Once we get all, everything under, um, all of the comments made and, and uh, the project set up the way it should be set up, um, we will be ready to put it out for bid. Um, we expect the estimated time of completion for this overall project would be second quarter of 2022. We want to be able to get this underway. We feel like we can get the, um, the grading and the um, restroom facility underway over the winter. Um, and then when the spring rolls around, uh, have the tennis facility brought in or the tennis courts uh, installed at that time. Um, we do not know at this point if the supply line backup or supply chain backup will affect or how much it will affect this project. So right now we still have an estimated time of second quarter. It will, as we get into the project, we'll have more updates on that. Question for you, Annette. Um, and you and I had talked a few weeks back now, but um, I don't remember seeing, but will we have included in this any type of seating for visitors that are coming to watch um, or people waiting for their next match, any of that? Is that going to be covered in the scope of work? And yes, will they include sunshades of some sort? Yes, there are Thank some. You. there's some seating mm -hmm. worked into the overall plan between the courts with some shading features for those seats. Okay, looking forward to that. Thank you. Any other questions on that project, particular project? The next project uh, is our wastewater treatment plant upgrades. I've asked 
Um, our utilities director, Greg Rushing, to join us tonight. He is here. Um, I wonder who that stranger was back there. <laughs> I nice will. <laughs> I want to provide you a little bit of material that he brought tonight. I was going to say, can we have some water samples for the students here? <laughs> <laughs> you can have one. I, 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 hey, they're still young. They can recover. Sorry, Mary. No, no, I got it. Uh, as I was told tonight, this is the no material of the membrane of the photo that you see here. Hmm. Um, and, if, and the photo is showing the membrane cartridge installation, and I will gladly turn this over to Greg to, <laughs> to explain to what that actually does. To talk over our heads yeah. real quick. <laughs> All right, Greg, what does it do? I, I was going to say. Just keep it high. Hey, they may be high schoolers, but we're third graders, so <laughs> keep it here. Uh, basically, this is the back end of the plant. Uh, we run it through <laughs> screens because the, the membranes uh, do not like grit or sand particles. So uh, once it gets here, it's the phosphorus is taken out to meet our permits, uh, and that's happened in biologically. And you get to here, and basically, what you're holding is a straw, and the vacuum is placed to the middle, and it's a very mild vacuum, is four to five psi, and we have enough cartridges there to. Uh, uh, produce four and a half million gallons a day. Uh, How big is the dimensions of that thing? Uh, the cartridge or the, uh, the picture let's there. see, 10 by 10. Oh, that's basically. pretty good size, yeah. And there are four per channel and we've got four channels. And how often do you have to change them? Uh, lightly loaded every 10 years or more. The, the experience with them is very good. And again, if you don't overload them or put chemicals or grit to them, they'll last a long time. Next photo is the biological nutrient reactor aeration testing. Uh, if Greg would like to speak on this portion. Uh, it's just the aeration. <laughs> I mentioned the, the biological processes that take the uh, nitrogen and phosphorus out, uh, we have to feed the bugs. We call them bugs, it's bacteria, and uh, we have to make them happy so they'll eat everything coming in. <laughs> and the next photo <laughs> oh, shows the biological water. nutrient reactor in the, uh, the closest portion to point. us. Uh, the membrane facility <laughs> just past that, and then the ultraviolet structure just beyond that. You can see the crane structure over here. That's for lifting the membrane cartridges out for maintenance. And UV is over here with the roof. It's kind of hard to see with the background of the uh, trees there. Yeah. But uh, any questions? We've got our <laughs> new generator, electrical building. Um, the aeration you just saw was in the right side, surrounded by the orange fence. And then last but certainly not least, the, the photo here is the installation of the UV ultraviolet disinfection system. Um, Prevents us from having to put chlorine and then dechlorinate after that. <coughs> UV just exposes the flow uh, continuously to ultraviolet light to kill all the remaining bugs that may be there. And so, Mayor and Council, the uh, the overall benefits of this project, this has been an ongoing project for year, year and a half. Construction. Yeah, construction project. Um, we're increasing the treatment capacity to 4.5 uh, million gallons per day. Uh, it was also built to be expandable up to 6 million gallons per day. Um, it is more efficient, so it's reduced power consumption. Uh, increased treatment efficiency to comply with more stringent regulatory permits um, or permit limits and then in also increased safety reduction of on-site chemicals so uh, it'll also have remote monitoring uh, on a 24-7 operation and control and the completion date completion date right now is 
November total completion days. is March, April time frame. And we didn't have of 2022. Yes. Yeah. And then uh, substantial completion will be done probably mid January. We are 91, a little over 91 percent complete with the overall project. Um, and we, which says we're still ahead of schedule and on budget. So that's good news. That's good. That's really good news. And Davey, thank you for bringing up the positives surrounding this. As we've just been through an election cycle, many people talk about infrastructure and how uh, they worry that we're not keeping up. I do think this, in my 17 years of serving our community, is the largest, both from time and money, uh, project that I'm aware of that we have uh, conducted within that time. It is to bring us efficiency. It is to get the best technology here. It is to expand uh, the capability and capacity of this unit. I'm very proud uh, to hear that it's on schedule, on budget, and uh, will provide the infrastructure needs that our community is uh, expecting from us. We did not wait for CARES dollars or federal funding uh, to assist with this. We took care of business as we do within our community, and I'm very proud of that. So I uh, just want to make sure we highlight that, and Davey, thank you for bringing up the positives related to this project. So yes, thank you, Greg. Great job. Great job. Is that the end of yes, our updates? Yes, ma'am. That is the end of the presentation. All right, Jamie. That is a great project. Mm -hmm. And I think it's like the closest you can get to without drinking the water. That's what I was to be say. drinkable the water. The students who are here tonight, you guys have been selected to be able to take the water <laughs> samples that come no. out the other do end. It. <laughs> but the, that because we it have to get done circulating, it. <laughs> and it gets discharged into the He's river. Greg has but it's that cleaner than the water that's in yes. the river. Right. Yeah, yeah, it'll be much better than river yep. water. That's for sure. We will return it better than we took it. Absolutely, that's a yeah, good thing. That's a great, yeah. that's a good Jamie's project. Probably cleaner than the water in the river. Mm -hmm. yes. Oh, it is. Yeah. Oh, it is. Yeah. Um, any further comment for the good of the whole? Oh, I'm sorry. No. Was, uh, just uh, holidays are coming up. Please be mindful of more traffic that's going to be coming through the town and outside visitors who are going to be enjoying all the things that we enjoy on a daily basis and. Uh, <clears throat> that's all it's getting colder make sure you check your uh, HVAC True. get it charged up before you turn it on because you don't want to have a cold night nope Lisa so um, I will acknowledge the kids in the back because my job as a parent is to embarrass people um, so which school are you guys from awesome what class government government who's your teacher Mr. Ambrose, all right, yes, know him well, so I'm glad to see that he got you guys here. I will say I had the privilege of doing interviews for High School 101 mock interviews last week and sat in Coach Lindak's class, um, and it was a blast. It was I was very impressed with how well the students came in, presented themselves, um, tried to get a job from me. The thank you notes that they sent afterwards really brought me to tears. So. It, it was great to be face to face. It was the first day they were allowing people back in the schools. So great? it was nice to be a guest in that school. And thank you guys for coming and hearing this. Um, yes, I, I know, Mr. Yeah, Ambrose. I don't see nobody taking notes. <laughs> Somebody back there was. I saw a couple, I saw a couple got, people. Uh, I watched. Uh -huh. I was gonna say, we can certainly check. But thank you guys for coming and for staying for the whole time. Absolutely. I, I will say, we've had that, some students that, that failed didn't. on us when the executive session hit. So thank you for staying the whole time and being involved with our community. Absolutely. I hope that each of you will view this as an opportunity to become involved. Absolutely. Trudy? I'm just glad to be back. All mm -hmm. right. Absolutely. We're glad to have you back. Mm -hmm. Chris? I'm good. Ronnie? It was a pleasure watching the uh, amphitheater. Mm -hmm. Every day I wrote about it a little bit more, a little bit more, a little bit more. So it's, that's all I got. I got a couple of things to wrap us up. Uh, Veterans Day event on the 11th. Um, we're all sitting here today because of the sacrifices made by those that went before us. Uh, that is a, a date in time that we all need to um, remember, you know, that someone else gave their lives for us. Uh, I'd like to compliment the communications effort on the leaf collection. 
sounds like a silly thing, but when those <coughs> leaves clog up those stormwater drains, we have issues. So uh, thank you for doing that. And it uh, looks like we're going to be doing leaves up close to Christmas at my house. So uh, appreciate that. Um, we did have an increase in uh, some of our costs. I'd like to make known that we don't increase costs unless a vendor or an increase has come to us. Uh, I'm very proud of the uh, way we manage financially here at the town of Fort Mill. We work hard uh, to keep the cost to our residents as low as possible. We don't raise taxes arbitrarily, haven't done so but once in 20 years, no matter who tells you, we have not. Mm -hmm. um, thank you, Shantae um, and staff for working hard. We work to minimize passing along those costs, but there are times that's just impossible to do. I would also like to thank Duke Energy. Uh, they had an outage that was scheduled. I used to work for Duke Energy and I understand the need when we've got cross arms on the taller poles holding the high voltage lines and they do have wear and tear from weather and need to be replaced. Uh, they had scheduled this outage earlier and it was going to impact our businesses downtown. Uh, they pulled back and said they would wait at our request and came back, did this outage got it done really quickly. Communication from the town was excellent on that as well. Thank you for the patience of our community. I can't thank our water line folks enough. Um, you know, we've had a couple of breaks recently. Guys, there's no reason to go dig up a water line because you <laughs> think it might break. You dig it up when it does and you make that repair and that's good cost management to and the it's community. It's always at one o'clock in the morning. So, yes, you know. never fails. <laughs> Uh, we did receive a very nice note uh, from the Hardy Hops event that we helped uh, to provide. They said it was a huge success in collecting money for a very good cause and that everyone loved being in our downtown area and enjoying what we were able to provide. They had a great shirt. I, I got one. Good. <laughs> I bought good. one. Cool event. Guys, we live in a wonderful place. Um, no matter how often we all get up and fuss about the traffic or fuss about this, that, or the other, I can't think of a better place to live. And it's because of all of our community and the efforts of our staff and our council. I am proud to be in Fort Mill and to have an opportunity to serve. Given that, for those of you on the back <laughs> row, um, Lisa had just written something that was on my note. The one time I'm not proud is when we do have elections and so few people take it upon themselves to go and vote. It's so simple. It is, it is a responsibility to go vote. It is. You need to take that sacred opportunity and vote. And don't do it blindly. Try to find out exactly what it is you're voting for. But do so because so often we forget that that is really out there on the edge of freedom that we have an opportunity to vote for the people that make the decisions. I'm grateful for those that have allowed us to serve, yes. but I'm ashamed that so few people went to the polls. So um, take that responsibility um, to heart, please. With that, I'll entertain a motion for adjournment. A motion to adjourn. Have a motion to adjourn. I'll we'll second. Second. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 All those opposed, nay. I hope you have a great night. Thank, Thank you, you so much.